Hi, I'm Jules and welcome back to my little studio. This is the paint part of my channel. This is where we'll be doing some painting and um, of images that I've taken from the various places that I've been to. Now, this one is related to my previous video, which was the Biddulph Grange video. Uh, that one, there was a couple of images that I really loved that I was tempted to paint. Uh, there was a few little blue flowers uh, that I will do. I don't think they were showing actually how they're done. That's they're just little blue flowers. Uh, and I'm also going to do a landscape. Now, I was stuck between two landscapes. They had got the Chinese garden there. They got this beautiful like um, Chinese setting. And it was just, it was just lovely. I'll save the Chinese one for later in the year when the weather is um, a lot better and most of the plants will come out then. So what I'm going to do is just a nice little scenic one that uh, there was at the lake and the trees. It's quite green and watery, but I just liked it and I thought it was a nice, um, serene one to paint. When I say paint, I'm actually going to do pastels. Uh, I usually use acrylic paint to, to paint my images with, but this time I'm going to go back to pastels. I haven't used them for a couple of years, so it's a a bit of a learning curve for me again uh, but I just th thought that this particular image would suit pastels better so um, carry on watching me if you wish and we'll get down to doing some painting thank you <laughs> Right, we're going to start this pastel painting now. I'm using Sennelier chalk pastels and uh, it's on Sennelier card which comes in a, um, a booklet full of different coloured cards to use. It's quite thick, it's quite um, sandpaper-ish so it holds the pastel really well. I'm also using throughout this video a couple of Derwent pastel pencils as well. Um, just to fill in little parts that need a little bit finer detail. I always start my um, paintings, whether it's acrylic or pastel, by just blocking areas, just putting rough colour in areas where it's going to go. And I slowly sort of build up on that. I just build up little um, overtones of just even little odd marks, just to build it up slowly over time. Uh, this is probably why I don't do watercolour, because you can't really do the same with watercolour, you know, you've got to be pretty good first time with that, where this is a little bit more forgiving uh, if there's areas that don't work out very well or don't look very well, you couldn't go over them. Um, so that's why I generally like pastel for that reason and acrylic, because acrylic works very similar uh, with being able to overpaint once it's dry. The board that the paper is attached to is uh, one that lifts up from the frame, from the side. So that's why if you're looking at this and it doesn't look very straight or flat, it's because it isn't, it's just an angle. So I do apologize for that beforehand, but that's, you can't really have pastels on a flat surface. They would just, all the dust would just settle everywhere and make a right mess. So at least you can drop down on a, a board that's just an angle. some detail in now um, they're just a few loose tree ideas and where the bushes are going to be and uh, just built up a little bit more a bit on the sky a bit of the clouds I suppose I class my work as well I'm more of a stylized type of artist and I just enjoy messing and playing with the different colors pastels are very vibrant so they do bring out this vibrant quality in the work which is a little bit different than perhaps a traditional style but that's the beauty of art it's so different every artist is totally different and unique and that's why so many people love art I think because there's so many different genres different artists different ways of painting that there's something for everyone and everybody has their own taste.
Here I've used the Derwent pencils just to put in some of the smaller detail at the back. It's quite difficult actually to, to get fine detail with pastels. I know some pastel artists actually um, shave off parts of the pastel sticks and pencils to get them to such a fine point to get some detail. But because you're working on a surface that's quite um, jagged I suppose in the way like a sandpaper uh, you don't sort of get that uh, smooth little line that you would get with all the other artwork so you're never going to get a crisp sort of feel unless you're doing a very very large painting I suppose so it's more suggestive than actual so putting detail into these paintings is is quite tricky you just sort of have to suggest and hope it looks like you wanted to at the end. it seem a little repetitive here as I'm going over little bits constantly just little tiny bits just the odd line here and there but that's I mean sometimes also it doesn't work sometimes you just have to smooth them out and perhaps start again because they don't always look right and, and sometimes you can overpaint and, and do too much um, and then again you're just sort of smudging them out you're also making the lines paler by a bit of smudging fingers I mean this is a lovely thing about pastels you get your hands covered in, in pastel that's if you don't mind getting your hands dirty and you can sort of feel where you're going it's sort of a quite a um, a tactile medium in which to use starting to darken areas now and put a, a lot more detail in the background's looking better we've got some of the trees in uh, we've got more color in now and we're just sort of putting darker areas in these darker areas may be smoothed out again and maybe gone over again a bit later it depends what it looks like in the end uh, uh, where you want the dark patches to be uh, because we do the dark patches then we'll do some lighter patches and then some darker patches and we're gradually building up this layering technique of which gives the different colour and the, uh, the suggestion of leaves.
building up the layers here and we can see the with pastels we've got either side of the board here and also some of the do and pastel pencils uh, the pastels on the left hand side are a mixture of many different kinds of pastels which are all work really well in their own way uh, but once I've run out of certain ones I just clump them all together and keep them in one place so I've got the colours sorted. The other side are the Sennelier pastels, uh, they are very soft, they're very translucent, quite expensive pastels but they, they do give a wonderful effect. It's just, you know, the problem, I suppose, if when you want to do very fine detail, a soft, crumbly pastel isn't always probably the best thing to aim for. starting to get towards the end here now it's just really just going over a little bit just finding little faults this is the problem part now where you just can't leave it alone and you start messing um, so it is just 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 finishing off little parts thinking I've finished so I am now taking the paper from around the sides so to look at it thinking I've finished but like always I never really have
again finding little bits to do, little bits of highlight that I've looked at and I thought, you know, it could just do a little bit of lightning here and there just to um, bring, make that pop a little bit, that part against the dark background. So yes, I am messing with it again. finished? No, I don't think so. Uh, I see other little parts here, just, just little bits to finish off. Well, that's definitely the end. I am not touching it anymore. That will do. That's the end of that painting. Thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed, please subscribe and like my videos as I will be making some more. Uh, I'll leave you with an image of what the inspiration was for this particular one. Thank you. Bye.